Center Global Church family, welcome to the ongoing conversation about international missions at Fellowship Bible Church, where you get a front row seat to hear what God is continually doing to establish His church around the world. My name is Emma Kate, and I am your host for today, and we are joined by some of our Global Church partners from Southeast Asia, Joel and Rachel McManigal. So welcome, guys. Welcome to cold Virginia from very warm, very tropical Southeast Asia. So thank you guys so much for being here. Yeah, thanks for having us. We're excited to be here. Yeah. So how long have you guys been in the States? So about two and a half weeks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So you had that nice warm stretch and now. Yes. It's, it's, pretty cold. it's very cold. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm so glad that you guys are here. Um, and so a lot of our um, people at FBC are very familiar with you guys in your story, but can you just kind of introduce yourselves? Who are you and how are you guys connected with FBC? So Joel, if you want to go first. Sure. Yeah. Um, we're Joel and Rachel. We have um, two kids, Micaiah and Malachi. And uh, Rachel and I both grew up in um, Thailand. And both our parents, and actually Rachel's grandparents, were also um, missionaries in Thailand as well. And so our history in Thailand goes back to 1953, when uh, wow. Rachel's grandparents first arrived there. Um, so we both grew up there, um, and through our time there, um, the Lord used our families um, just to um, plant churches in two different people groups um, and then we um, once we graduated from high school moved to the US for further education um, but during that time uh, studying in the US um, both Rachel and I uh, still had a heart for missions work um, and we saw ourselves one day um, going back onto the mission field and so um, we got married here in Virginia, and then in 2016, we um, went into missionary training, and after finishing that, we were back here in Virginia for uh, two years, okay. and um, yeah, then the Lord took us to Thailand. Um, when we arrived, we arrived there in 2021, and um, yeah, right in the midst of COVID, mm -hmm. so that was quite the, quite the adjustment. Yeah. But then also arriving back to a country that we were both familiar with, but now we are adults mm -hmm. in this country that we only knew as kids, um, was was a big adjustment for both of us. Mm -hmm. um, but because of that long history as well, um, the Lord just really was going before us mm -hmm. um, especially we saw that through relationships that um, people that knew Rachel's grandparents her parents and us and our kids now and so mm -hmm. um, yeah the Lord just used a lot of different things I think to bring us back to Thailand okay um, but also um, before we knew we were going back preparing us to mm -hmm. to go back as well yeah. So, so Rachel, I don't know if you kind of want to speak to what did that preparation look like of um, when you guys are still in the States and what did that look like before you went to Thailand? Yeah. So first of all, I think Joel mentioned we were after we were married, we were here at FBC mm -hmm. for four years. And even then God was preparing our hearts because as missionary kids, we had transitioned um, to a lot of different places mm -hmm. and um, I especially didn't feel like I had roots in a home church. Okay. And so just being here, we both were um, involved with the youth group. Um, it was just cool to be a part of the body of Christ and experience okay. um, experience using our gifts in that way. And also, yeah, just being a part of the mm -hmm. church here. Um, God really developed a love in our hearts for the body of Christ and the local church. Um, and then formally, when we were at... Um, the training center in Missouri. We spent two and a half years um, really diving into working cross-culturally, okay. um, discipling, and I'm trying to think what some of our classes um, there involved. Even what a mature church looks right. like, mm -hmm. um, because as we go overseas with the goal to um, establish mature churches or plant new churches in um, people groups that do not have access to the gospel, mm -hmm we want to know what that end goal looks like and what that mature church like 
a mature church looks like. And mm-hmm. Rachel spoke to it as well. But our, our time here at FBC was so valuable um, to see a mature church functioning, mm-hmm. to be a part of a church that is fulfilling its um, God-given call mm-hmm. and design. Um, for us to experience that being on the receiving end, but also on the serving end as well, um, I think was extremely valuable for us mm-hmm. um, before heading overseas. Um, so that as as we were l- looking to this future goal, we kind of have a taste of what, at least in this context, what that mm-hmm. looks like. Right, right. And so I want to bring up, because you guys have both talked about, like, um, establishing mature churches, and that um, is a big part of Global Missions here at FBC when Scott and Jim um, come, and they we did a podcast earlier about the philosophy of Global Missions here, and they talked about, like, that's one of the overarching goals is establishing mature churches, and so you mentioned that something, so we get to hear what they do on our side, but now you guys are our global church partners over there, and so what does that goal, what does that look like being carried out in an every day this is your life what does that look like for you guys there's yeah there's many steps to that process Mm -hmm. and there's many um we kind of get to be involved in various processes of various churches Mm -hmm. um being uh growing unto that maturity i even think of fbc as part of god's call and design for fbc to be going into um, to sending the gospel into Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and the ends of the earth Mm -hmm. by us going and FBC sending us. um, FBC is fulfilling that God-given call and design to go to the ends of the earth. And so when we land in Thailand, we immediately become part of a local body, Mm -hmm. um, a local church uh, in, in Chiang Mai, and um, as we are learning language and culture, we're um, involved in this church, serving with this church, but also um, the question comes up, what is this church needing? What, mm-hmm. what, what role do we fill in order for this church to reach into its Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and the ends of the earth? Um, but also, we get to experience our need for the body of Christ as we are in a foreign c- mm-hmm. culture and language, and we have questions, and who okay. better to go to than the body of Christ? Mm-hmm. And so um, the, the church that we um, joined um, upon arriving in Thailand is a church that Rachel's parents went to when they were living there. And... Um, it is uh, just a really, really neat church, but one thing that um, is lacking is the reaching out into its Jerusalem, Judea, mm-hmm. and Samaria, and the ends of the earth. And what does that look like for that church there? Right. Um, with it, it's going to look very different just based on their um, financial means. How far can they go? What is what is the ends of the earth for them? Mm-hmm. It's not going to be the same as FBC. And so as we have spent the last three years um, with this this church, um, the organization we are with, their, the goal, uh, their target is um, unreached people groups. So what that would mean is people groups that do not have a... Um, the body of Christ. They, they don't have access to the gospel. They don't have access to the gospel. Okay. There's there's not a local church that they can attend. And mm-hmm. so and so as we as missionaries are looking at these various unreached people groups, mm-hmm. how can we um, plant a church there? But then this local church that currently is not reaching out into its Jerusalem, Judea, and ends of the earth, mm-hmm. how can um, they partner with us so that they are also fulfilling God's call and right. design for them. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there's, yeah, I'm just describing three different churches. They're at different stages, mm-hmm. and we are um, just blessed and privileged to be at a, a part of one of those stages mm-hmm. of each of those mm-hmm. churches. 
And this is really different than what it would have looked like 30 years ago when right. our parents were there because they arrived and there wasn't much of a national church. There wasn't much there. So they had to take it a step back and um, really start at the beginning of church planning um, with evangelism and discipleship and then establishing that church. Whereas um, what we've been involved with is our first step was an evaluation of, okay, what is here? Who is mm-hmm. here? What is God already doing in this place? And how can we ab- be a part of coming alongside mm-hmm. those believers and spurring them on towards maturity? Yeah. And that's awesome to be able to already see the fruit of the work that has been done mm-hmm. before you guys got there and then come along and partner with that. So then what does that um, practically look like as you guys, you grew up in Thailand, but mm-hmm. what does that look like in connecting with these unreached people groups? Are there languages? Is there more cultural things now that you're on the ground there? What does that look like for you guys, Rachel? Yeah, so our first step was learning culture and language, and a lot of people are like, oh, I thought you already spoke the, the language and knew about the culture, and we did mm-hmm. as children. So mm-hmm. we could have conversations that a child might have, and we could go to a restaurant and order things, and we could talk about your favorite color or what you like to do, what mm-hmm. your hobbies are, that type of thing. Mm-hmm. But as we thought about discipleship and teaching, we just really saw our lack in the language and a lack in our understanding of what was going on Um, in their worldview. Um, And so we've spent the last, a good portion of the last three years just studying language and culture. So um, Joel was taking a class online and that was part of our visa platform to be there. Um, But then we also had a lady coming to our house a couple times a week um, and just sitting down and um, sometimes we would have her tell a story and then we would kind of analyze, okay, like how does she communicate this? And then we would Mm. practice with different types of texts, like there's narrative and there's um, informative, like telling how to do something, giving somebody instructions. Um, We realized pretty quickly as we had stuff delivered to our house, we didn't know how to give directions well. And so that was something we had to learn early on. Um, And then um, in the Bible, we see exhortation in text. Mm -hmm. So how do they do that? That's gonna be different than we do, Um, even what they start with. A lot of times we, we present, I'm going to get this backwards, we present the story and then draw truth out of it. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Or am I getting this backwards? Mm-hmm. Um, but they will start with their main points. This is where I'm going today. And then they will give a, a story to illustrate it. And so even okay. just kind of bigger um, mm-hmm. text structure is different. And we had to right. study those things because the message that we have to bring is so important. And we want to make sure we're communicating that mm-hmm. clearly and not as as children. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so what did that look like for your kids as they, because I'm assuming they're learning the language along with you guys, but what was yeah. their process? Yeah, so um, early on it was just play, like get out and play with other kids. And that was really challenging during COVID. Mm-hmm. So that was delayed a little bit, but even in that, many of you prayed for friends for our kids and God was so faithful to provide that. Um, so yeah, they have a bunch of friends and um they're they're really getting the language they understand a lot they're speaking kind of at a basic level um and then probably about a year ago we had when i stopped learning um, language formally we had our language helper continue to come and work more specifically with the kids and she's taught them how to read and write as well gotcha gotcha well that's awesome and so you pulled out something like you saw god answer a prayer there and providing Mm -hmm. um, friends for your kids what were some other prayers that you saw god answer in your past three years in thailand um one story that i can think of specifically that um yeah that really stands out is as we and FBC was praying for friends for our kids. Yeah. We arrived in the middle of COVID mm-hmm. and it was the first year we were there, the church was closed. And so there was no opportunity to um, gather with fellow believers um, and their kids. In the neighborhood we lived in, um, it, people were very hesitant to interact with foreigners. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. It was, it was widely broadcasted that, you know, COVID was being brought in by foreigners. And so we were very much avoided. Um, But again, just the Lord's faithfulness to, um, to us and our kids, um, as Rachel shared that 
Um, yeah, the Lord provided those friends. We had a girl show up at the door at our gate one day after two or three months of living there, and this this girl was um, lived in our neighborhood, and after that day, she was over at our house almost every single day. We felt like we had a third child. Yeah, and it, um, she would be at our house until after our kids went to bed. And um, just really, uh, and, and her, her language ability, her, she had enough English to be able to play with the kids, but not so much that the kids didn't have to learn Thai as well. Mm. And so it was just a really, really good um, opportunity. Um, but I share that to say it was about eight months of this girl showing up at our house every single day to play. Um, and after about eight months, one day Malachi comes into the house and he just sits down on the couch and he says, he says, I am so tired of this. I said, tired of what, buddy? And he said, I am so tired of being the monkey in the zoo, playing dolls, <laughs> playing house. Play. I just want some boyfriends to play with, to kick a soccer ball and stuff. Mm-hmm. And just the, yeah, I mean, he was very upset about this and it kind of got to the end of it. And so my my initial instinct was like, Malachi, let's pray about this. But then I, I found myself hesitating as well, like, Lord, I'm not going to have him pray about this if you're not going to follow through. <laughs> mm. You know, like, yeah. like, like God, we needed to protect yeah, God's reputation. Protect yeah. God's reputation from my six-year-old son. Mm-hmm. And I was just also struck in that moment of, wow, where's my faith? Mm-hmm. You know, that, yeah. that... I would encourage, point my son to God, to pray to God, but then I have my doubts as to whether God will be faithful. Mm, mm-hmm. And just convicted in that moment, just telling Malachi, okay, let's let's pray about this. And so we prayed about it. And what was it? Three days later, four boys showed up at our gate to play soccer. Mm-hmm. And wow. um, yeah, just, uh, yeah, Malachi, I was working on lessons or something. And uh, Malachi comes running in the house, and he said, there's four boys at the gate. Can I go play? And I think my jaw hit the floor, like, no (laughs) way. (laughs) Uh, So, yeah, just, um, yeah, the Lord Lord cares for our Mm -hmm. kids. And, um, uh, yeah, just that that was one of the clear examples of just how the Lord's faithfulness, um, even through those little things, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's so cool how he shows up in that for us in those just little mm-hmm. moments, but yeah. it makes all the difference. So, what about you, Rachel? Is there any story that comes to mind of how you could see God clearly answering a prayer or even a hope that you had um, over these past three years in Thailand? Yeah. So something that was highlighted for me pretty early on was my inability to have like a meaningful adult conversation mm-hmm. with people. Um, but then as we continued to work with our language helper and our language ability grew, our ability to do that grew. And I'm just really thankful for God providing our language helper because, yeah, I just feel like she was handpicked by him. And she she would, she'd come to our house and we would just talk for an hour before we ever got into like what we were actually supposed to study. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's still all language. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and we would. She She's the one that a lot of you have prayed for her daughter who had um, some significant heart problems and had to undergo open heart surgery while we, while we were there. Um, and so those were some of the things that we talked about, like leading up to the surgery, like, is it okay to feel discouraged and to feel like the heaviness of this as a believer? Like, do we always need to be you know, happy and cheerful, Mm -hmm. or like, is this normal for me to be wrestling through? Um, So we started having those types of conversations and um, conversations about parenting and just daily Christian Mm -hmm. life things. And I just found that to be such a encouragement as we were doing language study, because Mm -hmm. sometimes it can be really mundane and dull and you're doing the same thing over and over again but to have that constant reminder in front of me of like this is this is why I'm putting the work in Mm -hmm. so that I can have these kind of conversations and be a part of discipling Mm -hmm. women who are are growing in their relationship with the Lord yeah yeah 
Man, that's so cool. Um, and that kind of brings me to my next question is, you guys got there in the middle of COVID. The church wasn't meeting. So you guys talked about your kids finding friendships and relationships. But what was that like for you guys to find a community and build those friendships and relationships besides the language helper? Like, what did that look like for you guys? Um, I think, yeah, that was something that was difficult and and something I don't think we were anticipating mm. going into it um, because it is a country that we were familiar with. But again, we arrived being able to, the things that we could say, we could pronounce them well. So we sounded like we spoke well, mm. but our vocabulary and our ability to have deeper conversations was very limited. And um, during that first year, also the church was closed and so those that we, uh, other believers that we'd have the most in common with, um, we weren't able to get together with them. And um, as yeah, our co- immediate community was very closed off as well. Um, so yeah, that was, that was very difficult. But again, um, I think that just really grew our value for the local church that first year that we were there, um, not being able to gather as a body, having that lack Mm -hmm. really showed us the need Mm -hmm. that we had um, for the local body, for the body of Christ. And um, I think one thing that um, overseas workers often find themselves doing is uh, they go to a mall or they go somewhere and they see another foreigner from the same country, mm-hmm. you know, they see another American and it's, oh, you're also from America. And they immediately have this connection and they're excited and, you know, it's a little piece of home. Mm-hmm. And, but why don't we do that with the body of Christ? Mm-hmm. When we see right. other believers, like, hey, you're a believer also. And we have this immediate connection because we are both children of God. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think during that time, the Lord just really, um, showed us that need. And so once the church did open up a year into our time there, um, it was so refreshing just to gather as a body. Mm -hmm. Um, and because of the relationships and how the Lord has gone before us through, um, our families, when we first went to the church, I mean, we were immediately accepted and welcomed. They knew who we were. They knew our background. They knew us. Many of them knew us as kids. Wow. And so, um, yeah, those, those relationships were just very, very sweet. And, Mm -hmm. um, specifically, um, our language helper and her husband, we've um, gotten really close with them. And, um, that's just a relationship that, um, we were prayed for and the Lord answered in, in, um, just such neat ways as, as we, yeah, depended on her for language. We also realized that just as friends and for fellowship, mm-hmm. you know, we were really dependent on them as well. And, um, just the opportunity that we've had to have deep conversations with them and, um, just even thinking about future ministry and things like that, like they, they are very, um, yeah, very near and dear and mm-hmm. interested in what mm-hmm. the Lord is doing and want to be a part of what, wherever the Lord would have us go. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, back to the church relationships for a minute, I wanted to add something. Mm-hmm. Um, the culture there is very familial. Okay. And so because we have these strong family ties um, we were able to enter in kind of as family to the point where um, I have aunts in a way that would speak into our lives, especially about cultural things that we might not be aware of mm-hmm. um, and things that they wouldn't, they probably wouldn't approach us with if if we didn't have that relationship okay. um, because 
it would be shameful mm-hmm. to, to like confront somebody on some of these things. But if you have that family relationship, then they can be like, hey, like what you did in that situation, mm-hmm. that wasn't actually like super appropriate or mm-hmm. like, have you thought about this or changing this? Or yeah, I can't think of any specific mm-hmm. examples right now, but just the, their willingness to speak into our lives in that way is really unusual and mm-hmm. something we're super thankful for. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Man, it's just so cool to hear how like God way back with your grandparents was just paving the way for you guys to be there to work with him in this way, which is just so awesome. So now what does your life look like being involved with this local church now that it's open? I know, Joel, you kind of alluded to it earlier, but what what does church life look like for you guys over there? Yeah, the church life there is unlike anything I've ever experienced before, even as a kid. Um... It, this, this church is made up of six or seven different people groups come together, which is unusual. Um, oftentimes, especially in the city, the churches will be made up of one main people group and they all gather, to their, uh, gather together. Um, but this church is different in that way. And the body life in this church is, um, is incredible. Uh, It just always reminds me of the passage where Jesus says that by your love for one another, Mm. um, they will know that you are my disciples and that we have seen that and experienced that and um, just think that that is such a neat testimony too because I do think those looking on from the outside and seeing the the body life and the love for one another, that is something extremely attractive. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, but for example, they... Uh, our our Sundays um, <laughs> are, it, full. <laughs> are full. We arrive at church at um, nine thirty, and Sunday school begins. After Sunday school is the church service, and um, that ends at noon. and And then after that, we eat together, um, oh. and yeah, till one one thirty, and then after that, people hang out. Um, at the church. Oftentimes there's um, church cleanup, mowing the grass and sweeping leaves and cleaning up or... Um, the ladies will often meet together in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. The um, youth will get together <clears throat> during that time. Um, oftentimes the, the men's group will um, have a cookout or something and so typically we go we get home at three or four or something on Sunday. Um, but it's just a, um, yeah, time to spend with the body, mm-hmm. just fellowshipping and, um, yeah, it's it's really, really fun. Their Christmas program is, <laughs> is even maybe more extreme than that. We start, um, yeah, nine in the morning with um, a church service um, and various events all throughout the day and have a cookout and, then it ends um, in at night mm-hmm. with different um, skits and activities and Christmas, um, yeah, songs and all kinds of stuff. And uh, this year we got home at eleven thirty p.m. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it was a very so, full yeah, day <laughs> from nine in the morning till eleven thirty. And so, yeah, it's just a group of people that <clears throat> love to be together, mm-hmm. okay. that love to. Um, yeah, celebrate what Christ has done for mm-hmm. them and together as mm-hmm. a body. And um, it's been really, really encouraging and neat to be a part of mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Um, and for many of them, that is their only day off of work. Like, wow. And it's significant that they take a whole day off of work for worshiping the Lord. Um, that's a testimony in their culture. Mm-hmm. But then the fact that they're willing to spend all day on their day off together, just celebrating being together and... And it's really life giving for them. That's mm-hmm. how they choose choose to do it, and yeah, uh, it's mm-hmm. really cool. Yeah, it's it, it's interesting when we think of our Sabbath rest. Mm-hmm. Oftentimes, I think here in the West, we think of that as being something where okay, I need to get away and mm-hmm. I need to be secluded, and I you know that's my Sabbath. Well, why why can't Sabbath also be with one another in this communal aspect mm-hmm. where we are? resting in the Lord Mm -hmm. and that that is our Sabbath and I think that's something that they have really found to be true that that is a time that is very Mm -hmm. life-giving it's not draining 
Um, and yeah, our our involvement there in the church is one just <laughs> we often feel like we're more blessed by this church than we have to contribute. Um, but in the last year, Rachel has um, been teaching Sunday school um, for the how, what ages? It's like third through sixth grade. Third so I'm on the rotation with okay. that. Yeah, and then. I'm on, they put me on the preaching rotation um, and um, adult Sunday school, teaching adult Sunday school sometimes. Um, and then they also have um, online prayer meeting on Wednesday nights. Um, so mm -hmm. that's midweek where someone shares a devotion. We spend time praying together. Um, and so it's, uh, they have a Tuesday night Bible study, which I was attending early on to. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what church mm -hmm. body life would look oh. like for us. Mm -hmm. But then there's also events like within the church community. So like, um, a new house dedication, which is a, something mm -hmm. we do in our culture, but that's really significant for them. Okay. Weddings, funerals, like just mm -hmm. kind of stuff that comes up in the lives of mm -hmm. people in the church. So that that's kind of sporadic throughout the week as well. Yeah. So that's so cool, though. Just like the togetherness, I mm -hmm. feel like, is what you guys are really talking about. That You guys all do it together um, and celebrate and just really doing life together, which is so very awesome. Were there, um, and again, you guys grow, both grew up there, but were there any culture shocks like heading from the United States to Thailand that were something that you guys had to wrestle with or adjust to? Yeah, so setting up our home was kind of challenging because, again, we had never been adults there. Mm -hmm. So... Um, life is less efficient in Asian <laughs> cultures or third world, world cultures, probably a combination of both. But, you know, there would be a specific item that we were looking for, like, yeah, like some plumbing stuff to to, to install our filter. That was one thing we, we ran into. And, you know, you have to go to like three different stores to find all the pieces. And then it's like not exactly the specific thing you're looking for. And so something really minor can be like an all day mm. event. Okay. And so when you're doing that to like set up your whole house, that's can be very time consuming mm. and frustrating. And that's something that is necessary mm -hmm. like in the first days of being there. So I think it's kind of the perfect storm. And I just remember being pretty overwhelmed by that or like what laundry detergent should I get when I can't even really like decipher all these things mm. in the label, you know, and yeah. yeah. So that, that was extremely challenging, mm -hmm. like kind of right out the gate. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Gotcha. And so you guys have been in Thailand for three years, getting involved in community, getting involved in the local church there, evaluating just the different people groups in the area. And then now you're back in the United States. So Joel, can you kind of speak to what this time in the United States means for you guys? What do you plan on doing while you're here? Yeah. Um, we, we very much feel like what God has called us to in Thailand is an extension of FBC, and it's something that um, FBC is very much a part of, um, just the vast number of folks that have been praying for us and lifting us up, and, and then those as well that are supporting us financially. It is very much, uh, we are on the ground there, but it is, mm -hmm. it is God's work, first of all, but it's also a work that FBC is is a part of and individuals in the church are very much a part of and so I think one of the main um, roles for us during this time back is kind of bridging that gap like coming back and sharing what what you have been a part of what mm -hmm. FBC has been a part of what God has mm -hmm. done not just through us but through FBC mm -hmm. as well um, and just kind of coming back and, and connecting with folks and um, just sharing God's faithfulness mm -hmm. through their prayers and through their giving. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that is definitely, I think, the main thing. Yeah. And I think we see this modeled by Paul and Barnabas. They were sent out by the church in Antioch in Acts mm -hmm. chapter 13. And we're not Paul and Barnabas. <laughs> like, well, we probably shouldn't even be comparing, <laughs> right? But they came back. You see mm -hmm. later on between the missionary journeys, they come back to Antioch and they report, this is mm -hmm. what God has done. And yeah. it gives the body their um, opportunity to celebrate with mm -hmm. them. Um, but then also in Acts chapter 14, it says they spent a long time there or something like that. I, I 
can't remember the exact wording. Mm -hmm. And I can just imagine that Paul and Barnabas are being ministered to during Mm -hmm. that time as well. And so it's this time of mutual ministry where they're they're reporting what God has done and um, rejoicing together over that. But then they're also receiving encouragement from the body there that has sent Mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Well, that's great. And um, Global Missions is also going to give you guys kind of a formal night, May 17th. So um, for those of you listening, put that in your calendars, May 17th here at FBC. We're going to do kind of a Global Missions update night, and you guys are going to be there and sharing more of your story um, and what's going on in Thailand. But if some of you say, oh my gosh, I can't make that date, you guys are open to, like if somebody invites you, you want to tell your story, will you want to share what God is doing? So um, what would be a good way for them to connect with you guys to hear more of what's going on um, over in Thailand. Yeah, so if you don't hear from us first, Mm -hmm. um, please reach out if you see us um, in the lobby on Sunday or um, can we link our phone number, Mm -hmm. email address. um, And we also send out an email update on a somewhat consistent basis um, so we can um, link the sign up for that as well if you want to be getting our updates on a more frequent basis we also send out um, whatsapp update updates whatsapp updates Mm -hmm. there we go Um, that are more often than our email updates Um, and so we can link that as well yeah no, yep, we will definitely put all of those things in the description um, so that people can connect with you guys. Um, and then I guess kind of my last question closing out, what does it look like for you guys when you go back to Thailand? You're here for a while, but what will it look like when you get back to Thailand? Yeah, that is a big question mark. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're not entirely sure. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that is one of the, the things that um, during this time, that we were going to be spending a lot of time thinking and praying about, um, and also inviting um, FBC as well as individuals that are um, supporting us and um, have been encouraging us all along this way to be praying with us mm-hmm. as to what is next. Mm. Um, we won't have time to share all of the the doors that we feel like the Lord mm-hmm. is opening at this time because there are several mm-hmm. very exciting things going on. Um, but yeah, just wisdom in knowing, um, where the Lord would have us, um, Mm -hmm. how he would lead us. Um, that is something that we are asking for prayer for. Um, just that, um, we, we don't necessarily feel like we need to know exactly what's next Mm -hmm. once we hit the ground, but, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that is definitely something to be praying about is what is next, what, Mm -hmm. What um, unreached people groups can we be involved in? How is um, our continuing uh, continuing involvement with the local church in Chiang Mai there? What will that look like? Mm-hmm. And how can we spur that church on to what God has called that church to do as well? And so, um, yeah. Yeah, so now that we've finished our formal culture and language mm-hmm. study, we have more time to be fully invested in whatever the ministry Mm -hmm. is going to look like. And like Joel said, there are lots of needs, lots of different possibilities, and all of them could be really cool. Mm -hmm. But it's just the two of us, and we're very (laughs) cognizant that God doesn't need us. Like He's going to be working in all of those different areas. Mm -hmm. But um, we just want to seek His will on what... Yeah, what Mm -hmm. what makes the most sense, What where He wants us Mm -hmm. to go with those things. The immediate... Yeah, steps when we get back there would be then reconnecting with that the church that mm-hmm. we've been a part mm-hmm. of. Um, we still have our house there that we're renting um, while we're gone, so we will land back there. And um, yeah, there'll be a time of reconnecting and I'm sure refreshing language. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for being on the podcast today. Really nice to have you guys here. Um, And again, for all of the listeners, make sure, yeah, if you see them, come up, talk to them. Um, And all the contact information will be linked in the description. Um, Also, for all our listeners, remember that we... Uh, the podcast love to hear from you so send over your thoughts questions requests um, and you can do that at fbcva.org forward slash podcast and write us your notes and comments Um, and feel free to share this with um, anybody uh, who hasn't heard our podcast they can find it wherever they get their podcast or youtube Um, 
Also, if you want to learn more about our other global church partners, make sure you check out the Mission Stairwell uh, next to the north main entrance at FBC. Each month, the Grace Ministry of Global Missions highlights a different global church partner. Um, in, the month of, in the month of March, we are highlighting Augustine and Retnam from India. And so if you go in the stairwell, you can find info sheets about them and their ministry in Hosar, India. There's also a word search for the kids um, and a recipe um, that they have sent over. And so this will be the last weekend that they will that they will be highlighted, so make sure that you stop in the stairwell to check it out. Um, also, make sure you check out our other two podcasts, uh, Sermon Spotlight and Fellowship Family. Thank you so much for watching and listening, and remember that it is Christ who is continually building His church until we all attain to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. Mm-hmm.